So this Cole Kerrigan slash Ace Family story has gone in way more insane in such a short amount of time. Last night I made two videos for you guys, one covering the allegations made against the Ace Family and the Twitter critiques around that, and the second showcasing Cole Kerrigan's lie within the video about Keemstar getting a supposed bribe of half a million dollars which was just blatantly not true and Twitter's reaction to that. Coincidentally, the second I released the latter video, Keemstar uploaded his own video onto Drama Alert titled The Ace Family Blackmailed by Cole Kerrigan. And as you can tell by the title, there was some pretty mind-blowing information that was shared thanks to Keemstar getting in contact with one of the supposed victims of the rape incident Cole talked about in his video. This is what she had to say. The other girl in question is Leslie Hannah Bell. I reached out to her on Instagram, had a long conversation with her on the phone privately, and she was going to come on to do an interview, but like almost every girl involved in this Austin thing, they just disappear. But anyhow, what Leslie told me was absolutely shocking. She told me a completely different story. And even though she didn't come on for an interview, she texted me with a link to her Instagram story where she said this. To speak on the video that Cole Kerrigan posted, some of you have already figured out that I am the other girl they're talking about in the video. I feel like this video was made for the wrong reasons. And this wasn't Cole's story to tell. Cole even texted me saying we could potentially get paid $100,000 from this following claim that Dromalert was paid off 500 k Swipe right to see the text. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, so you deliberately misrepresented what I said, Cole. You tried to make people think that I was paid off. But the girls in question, the girl that actually experienced this, is saying that you were trying to make money? I think we need to swipe right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you ready? We're about to swipe right. Let's see this. Whoop. It appears that we have text messages between Cole and Leslie, where uh, Cole seems to be saying, enough proof. But the point of this is not to upload the video. The point is to scare them into paying us off because they paid Drumler 500k. So I'm sure they would want to pay me 100k or more, not to say shit. And then I could split that with you guys if you help me and send me all the receipts that I need. Hold the phone! Cole Carrington, you mean to tell me your friends allegedly got raped and on top of it, you want to use their rape story to make yourself some money. You're going to split it with the rape. <laughs> and then, and then, Cloud Kerrigan, you have the audacity to try to send out this BS that I was paid 500k. I mean, it's just despicable. I mean, it's just, that's so despicable. But anyhow, let's go back to Leslie's original post where she says, I wasn't aware that Amanda or Cole were in contact with Dromler to anonymously run our story. But I was aware of Cole's video being made and I only wanted to be factual if it was ever going to be posted. I wanted to say that Austin McBroom is not to blame in the situation and did not rape me or anyone. I'm currently handling this situation in my own way. I brought this to social media to address the false accusations. This isn't what I wanted. There are several sides to every story and this isn't how I wanted to tell mine. Wow. So now we have confirmed two lies in Cole Kerrigan's video. One that two girls were raped and another that Keemstar was offered a half a million dollar bribe. But on top of all of that, Cole Kerrigan tried to blackmail the Ace family out of $100,000. Which makes sense with the timeline because back on the 11th of October, when Cole first mentioned he was going to make a video about this on his Twitter, he said that he was going to upload it tomorrow, but it ended up coming out three days later. So my theory is that within that three day time period, he was trying to blackmail the Ace family out of $100,000 so he would not upload the video. Obviously the blackmail didn't work, so he ended up uploading the video anyways three days later. Completely despicable stuff. I cannot even begin to imagine utilizing somebody's rape story in that sort of a way. And even though he hasn't got the 100k dollars, he did benefit pretty heavily off of this. 
Within 18 hours of this video being uploaded, he gained 3 million views and 50k new subscribers. That is absolutely insane. And even if his video was not monetized, I cannot confirm if it was or wasn't, it's still a lot to gain from a situation that isn't even yours to tell in the first place. Not to mention because he riddled his video with all these lies, his friend's rape story is now a lot less believable. And if this actually did happen, I feel really bad for the anonymous friend of Cole because he just heavily diminished any chance of you getting any sort of redemption for what happened to you. Obviously, Twitter is not very happy with Cole Kerrigan and there's also some additional information to go over that was posted onto Twitter, so let's get into that right now. First, we have BWC mentioning how Leslie has now deleted her Instagram story. Next, we have a direct response from Austin who says, If you have not heard, I've recently been a victim of extortion, defamation, and slander. I knew this was a cold world, but never did I foresee something this disturbing upon me. Thank you to all my Ace family members for all your concerns, and thank you to those who know my character and my heart. I do not wish this upon anyone, and can only hope that those responsible for this learn from their mistakes and become better people. My family and I are dealing with this matter privately, and taking legal action. Bullying, extortion, slander, and defamation of character is something I will not stand for, and I can promise that justice will be served. And then he shows the proof from Leslie's Instagram. So, Cole Kerrigan is in a heap of trouble legal-wise, as he should be, but the worrying thing about this is that if Austin is actually guilty of any of this to any extent, Cole just let him get away. This just goes to show. If you have a serious rape allegation, I'm not saying that it's confirmed or denied, but if it is indeed real, please go to the police. Do not make a YouTube video, do not try to profit off of it, just go to the goddamn police. YouTube and Twitter are not the authorities. Spreading the word will only warn the people who are being accused shit is coming their way and they can legally prepare for it. Like, please, if there is a serious allegation, have the police deal with it i'm tired of seeing this shit on my timeline because whether it's real or not videos like this doesn't help anybody except the person who uploaded it the youtuber optimist responds to this by saying imagine pretending to care that your friends were raped simply to try and get the ace family notorious assholes to pay one hundred thousand dollars in hush money and to have people in the story come out and say nobody was even raped what a fucking piece of shit the only way that i see the girl lying about nobody being raped as if they threatened to sue her or something. But even then, the NDA doesn't cover illegal activity, I don't think. So she had nothing really to worry about? I don't know, confusing situation, but fuck this Cole guy. Then the popular drama channel T-Spill came out and gave us some extra evidence by tweeting out, first screenshot is Cole's conversation between him, Blue, and Leslie and Amanda, Gray. Second is my conversation with Cole confirming everything. I'm not saying anything, do with this information as you wish. So the first screenshot reads out, Do this for y'all since it clearly only benefits you both. The only thing I asked was to take the matter seriously, which Cole clearly didn't in the beginning. Cole then responds, Leslie, I was only going to maybe get paid off to not post a video, but I'm realizing that that's not important and also not gonna happen. So I'd rather just post the video. If I make anything from it, it won't be much. And I already told Amanda I would split it with you guys because it's not the priority of this. I want you to be comfortable and okay with everything, but I also don't need a bratty attitude and any negativity coming from you because I'm literally just trying to help. You guys both available? I'm about to send a video so you can watch it because I'm posting it in a sec. Amanda then responds, yeah, send it. The next screenshot says, Okay, so the screenshot that Leslie posted about the 100k was real, but it wasn't the full story. What you just sent me was the entire conversation that happened and Leslie just showed the part of you saying you could make 100k, correct? Cole then responds yes, to which T-Spill responds, That's the bad thing. People are upset because you see this as potentially profitable, so it diminishes your credibility with the story. I get if you wanted to help your friend and release the story, but then it became about money. I think everyone was on your side with this, until Leslie posted that. So that is about it for the situation as of now. As always, if any more updates come out regarding this story, I will be the first to tell you about it here on my YouTube channel and over on my Twitter, so be sure to subscribe and follow respectively. For now, I'm going to leave you off with a very interesting 
conversation that went on between an accuser of Austin McBroom and the YouTuber John Swan. This starts off with Mother of Baddies saying, This is nothing compared to the other Austin McBroom victims, but I thought I'd share a screenshot of mine in Austin's DMs from a couple months ago. A lot more was said, but I don't think I can post it. I apologize for anyone else who has been in a similar situation. She then posts DMs that say, Yo, you blocked me off snap? Sorry if I made you uncomfortable. Try not to tell anyone about this. Just so you know, man, if you open your mouth, I'll leak the fuck out of your gay ass. What the fuck is your problem? What is wrong with you? To which Austin responds, Sorry, I'm just horny as fuck. Add me back on snap and give me a little something so I can shoot sweat emoji. You have a wife for that. Leave me alone. What the hell? Then Austin responds, If I paid your plane ticket and let me get up all inside your ass? Bro, I'm not even gay. You should be grateful I'm trying to smash. Then John Swan swoops in and says, These DMs are completely 100% fake. I have no idea why people keep on believing this stuff without any evidence whatsoever. So this is the second time in the past few months that fake DMs have come across my timeline. Uh, a few months ago it was James Charles. I debunked some fake DMs uh, in relation to that. And now it's the Ace family, uh, another lot of fake DMs. So we have here a uh, two of the screenshots. Uh, I'm going to address these and I'm going to address the video. Uh, but first we're going to look at the screenshots. So as you can see, uh, up here something seems to change, which is again characteristic of fake DMs. We have here the status bar size changing. You'll actually see this one looks more pixelated than this one does. So probably this one was the original and then this one was the shrunken version. So um, yeah, these are these are immediately fake DMs just because of that status bar right there. Uh, but then we've got the video. Now this is the even bigger offender. Basically you've got here the account um, scrolling through the DMs. This bit all looks fine until it gets up to the transition to the Instagram page. Um, when you transition over, it doesn't remove the top of the status bar and it also doesn't go to black. You see, it almost goes completely to black here and then transitions back in. Almost like someone keyframed this. You'll also see this doesn't have any sort of um, busier keyframes to it. It's like a linear motion and iPhone never makes keyframes like this. It's always very smooth, um, never jagged like this. It's completely, completely fake. You'll actually see over here the the name was supposed to fade out, and then it just kind of half faded. They landed on a on a steel frame, and then they transitioned over to a completely black screen and transitioned to his actual profile. Um, so no, <laughs> this is not this is not a real screen recording. And these are also not real screenshots. It's all completely faked. Once again, everyone believing everything without checking the facts first. So yes, even though that initial tweet gained a lot of traction, it was 100% fake. So that just goes to show you guys that when serious allegations like this come out, as much as you might want to, do not take it at face value. Because when allegations specifically involving YouTubers come out, there is a very high likelihood that it could be faked. It's the unfortunate reality of being accused of stuff while having a huge following. There's a lot for the accuser to gain off of your success. That's about it for the video. If you enjoyed, be sure to slap a like on it. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on to keep up to date with all of the news going on within the community. Thank you so much to my channel members. Members, and if you'd like to see more videos, they will be on the screen right now. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.